We have some breaking news to tell you about. One person is confirmed dead in an apparent homicide in Nash, Texas tonight. Police are investigating the crime, which they say happened at the Pine Ridge Estates trailer park. Thank you very much. Let's go back to that video if we can. You can see the dramatic flames that are there at this point. 1,000 pallets were already burning. The fire was so large, they had to get help from over 20 units in seven different departments. A young man is being called a hero tonight after saving the life of a teenager age girl who nearly drowned at the bottom of a local pool. This is a very personal memorial. This includes one of the letters I just got. It reads, I'm so sorry that your little boy got hit by a bus. I know that you're going to miss him. Signed, Natalie. More things like this are expected. Look at the scope of this tree, by the way, from the roots to what's left of the bottom of it. This right here is the giant pine tree that started to come crashing down early Monday morning and then hit the house. The accident itself happened about 15 feet right behind me. Just a sampling of the kind of devastation, how it could just be torn like a small twig. There's a reason that they say that Louisiana has weather you can wear. You're watching a little bit of Shreveport history unfold live on KSLA. Our photographer, Sebby Buffin, is going to zoom in on Shreveport Mayor Cedric Glover, who is just about ready to Cut the ribbon. Mayor, will you do the honors? Now. Live TV, everybody. A little bit of fireworks, smoke, flame, light show. And the party is underway. Good evening, I'm Jeff Farrell. Today, family and friends of a missing man are remembering the day one year ago this weekend that he walked out the door to go to the store and never returned. Elbert Knox was last seen walking from his home on Circle Drive in Shreveport and down Kemp Lane. They say Knox takes medication for a mental condition. And with each day that passes, they continue to hold out hope. In tonight's top story, KSLA News 12's Emily Black was there as family and friends searched the neighborhoods for answers. In a KSLA News 12 alert, police are asking for your help tonight to find a missing teenager suspected of running away from home. Bossier City Police are looking for 13-year-old Ariana Grace. She was last seen at her home on Friday night. Ariana is 5 foot 3 and weighs about 130 pounds. Anyone with information on her whereabouts is urged to call Bossier City Police at area code 318-741-8605. In tonight's Crime Tracker report, if you're involved in the selling of contraband synthetic drugs, law enforcement agencies on every level are coming after you. Officials met on Friday to talk about how to handle the rise in synthetic marijuana use in particular. They're urging parents and health officials to educate potential users about the life-threatening dangers involved with that kind of drug use. But law enforcement has a different message for dealers. Putting folks on, on notice that if you're selling the stuff, uh, they're going to come after you. Uh, and even as of today, I know that local law enforcement, including uh, some federal agencies, uh, as well as state police, are actually going after these folks that are selling the stuff. Here's another warning from officials. The long-term effects of synthetic marijuana are still largely unknown. A Shreveport father who lost his life while riding his motorcycle on Father's Day last weekend was laid to rest earlier today. That was back on Thursday night. Hundreds gathered at the scene of the crash along Clyde Fant Parkway in Shreveport to celebrate Derek Hall's life. Witnesses say Hall's motorcycle was simply going too fast when it crashed into a car. Funeral services took place this afternoon at the New Testament United Pentecostal Church on Walker Road in Shreveport. Hall leaves behind a new wife and a newborn baby. Islamic extremists now control a key border crossing in Iraq after capturing two more cities. Iraqi soldiers, meanwhile, also tried to demonstrate their strength today. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette has the latest from New York. The crisis in Iraq is driving up gas prices here in the U.S. The national average is now $3.68 a gallon. That's the highest it's been on June 21st in the last six years. KSLA News 12 wants to help you find the cheapest gas near you. Just click on the gas gauge at the bottom of our homepage. That's at KSLA.com.
In tonight's coverage on the economy, Louisiana's unemployment rate crept up half a percentage point in May. That's despite the fact that the state has gained 8,500 jobs since April. Louisiana's unemployment rate now stands at 4.9 percent. That's one and a half percent lower than the national average of 6.3 percent. Efforts to hold oil and gas companies accountable for damage to Louisiana wetlands continues to move forward for now. After hours of debate, a New Orleans area levy board failed to kill the lawsuit this week. With one board member absent, the vote failed on a four to four tie. Earlier this month, Governor Jindal signed a new law ending that lawsuit. Board observers expect one of the board members who supports the lawsuit to be replaced in the coming days. A shift in political power in the nation's capital tonight, with Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise now rising among the ranks of Republicans. The congressman from Jefferson, Louisiana, was elected by GOP leaders on Friday as House Majority Whip. Tanya Dahl has reaction from both the state Democratic and Republican parties, as well as with voters. I'm looking forward to seeing my wife and kids. Back here in the Arklatex, it's been a hot, muggy start to the first official weekend of summer. So what can we expect for tonight and tomorrow in the weather? For the answer, let's check in with Clay Osterley live in the Weather Center. Clay. We spotted several people, including small children, crossing a busy portion of Kings Highway in Shreveport, not far from the site of Thursday's crash, where an eastbound Cadillac hit a grandmother and grandson, pinning the woman under the car. A good Samaritan, along with the Shreveport Fire Department, uh, they were able to lift the vehicle and uh, physically remove the woman from below the vehicle. While the grandmother suffered critical injuries trying to cross Kings Highway, that doesn't stop what some estimate to be dozens of people making the same walk across this spot every day. We're measuring the distance from the crosswalk to where the accident happened because some had said that the pedestrians were not that far away from the crosswalk when it happened. And what we measured is 169 feet. That's too far of a walk for some pedestrians we met who prefer just using the shortcut right in front of the Burger King. Personally, that's safer down there than right here. Rhonda Robbins is no fan of this intersection at Linwood Avenue and Kings Highway. The city reports 23,500 vehicles travel through it every day. She describes almost getting hit recently by a left-turning driver as she was walking in the crosswalk. I went, stop, stop, and he goes, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking. The city has even posted this sign in the area for eastbound Kings Highway traffic that reads, reduce speed ahead. But one witness tells us he sees at least one close call each and every day involving a pedestrian using the shortcut instead of the crosswalk. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12. He was beating me half to death all across the, all across the house. Could not get away from him. But Deanne, as we'll call her, did somehow escape from her abuser back in 2010. She eventually made it here inside the Providence House Domestic Violence Safe House in Shreveport. If it hadn't been here, I would have died. But this week, Providence House announced it could no longer afford to manage the safe house. They plan to accept their last client April 30th, with the last client leaving May 25th. That's where State Representative Patrick Williams stepped forward, talking with the city, state, and community leaders to find a new nonprofit that could step in and take over the shelter. Oh, it, it hasn't happened. There's not a, a, a matter if, it's just a matter of when. So yes, it's definitely going to happen. Here at Government Plaza, Shreveport Mayor Cedric Glover says domestic violence is a life or death situation. That's why he says it is completely unacceptable to even think about the city of Shreveport without a domestic violence shelter for even a single night. That being said, he has some strong feelings about the current timetable set down by the Providence House, saying that 19 days, less than three weeks, to find a new operator for the shelter is simply not enough time. No. Instead, Mayor Glover is asking Providence House to at least honor their current contract with the state of Louisiana. At the very least, at this point, you have a contract that takes you to through the end of this fiscal year. That fiscal year ends on June 30th. Providence House Executive Director Simone Hennessy has passed the mayor's request on to her board of directors, but there's no timetable when they're supposed to meet again. And Hennessy says she's confident a new agency will be found to run the safe house. We will find somebody here. We will find somebody. I don't think there's, there's no doubt in my mind that there is going to be somebody. 